Well, welcome to another online service. We're so sorry that for most of you, you can't come and join us, but we're also incredibly thankful that through the magic of YouTube, we can be with you today, worship and share the Lord's um, word. I hope you're having a really great week. Um, and as I came to prepare for today's service for this introduction, I thought I'd just go through what has been happening for me a little bit through this lockdown season which I am getting increasingly tired of. But if there's any positive, it is that I've been able to slow down the pace of my life a bit, look at some of my priorities and really just stand before the Lord. And it is in prayer and reading the scriptures and coming before the Lord that I've come across this um, Psalm, Psalm 24 that says, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false God. And that's what I want to do. I want to ascend the mountain of the Lord. I want to stand in his holy place. But I am well aware that I do not have a pure heart and possibly that I do trust in idols, that I do trust in possibly my job or my home situation or whatever it may be. Um, so this is really something I've been bringing towards the Lord to try to come to the Lord in a right spirit. But I really also feel encouraged that in Psalm 51, King David also writes, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And that is my prayer. So that's something I don't think I can do in my own strength to purify my own heart, but in the spirit through Jesus that he can do that. And something I feel even more encouraged by is that I'd already made a decision to share this today on the introduction and on the drive over on the YouTube video that I was listening to talking about the Hebridean revival. Psalm 24 is actually the verse that they read over themselves just before a big outpouring of the spirit. So um, it is with that in mind that I think I'd love to pray through this with you if you'll join with me. Lord, we just give you this day, we give you this time, we give you this season. And Lord, we pray as we stand still before you, that you will purify our hearts and renew a right spirit in us, that we may ascend the mountain of the hill, that we may stand in your holy place, that we will come to know you better and come to look more like Jesus. Amen. And now the band are going to lead us in a worship song called Did You Feel the Mountains Tremble? Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing oh, Jesus Christ the When young and old will turn to Jesus But fling wide you heavenly gates Prepare the way of the risen Lord And open up the doors And let the music play Darkness tremble when 
All the saints join in one song And all the streams flow as one river To wash away our brokenness Cause we can see Cause we can see that God you're moving A mighty river through the nations When young and old will turn to Jesus Now let's do as David talked about. We ask, create in me a pure heart. As we come to confession, as we come to say sorry and in penitence, let us turn from the things that have transfixed us other than Christ, where we've done those things we ought not to have done, where we haven't done those things that we should have done. And let's ask, Let's ask our Heavenly Father to wash away all our iniquity, to cleanse us from our sin. And so let's confess together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those that with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. May each of us know by the power of the Holy Spirit you have blotted out our transgressions, you have washed away our iniquity and you have cleansed us from our sin. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and wonders the wonder of thy saving presence, renew thy people with thy heavenly grace 
and in all our weakness sustain us by thy mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So now let's continue our service as we pray. As we pray together today, we're going to use our hands to help us pray. So if you would like to, let's join by outstretching our hands to pray for our world. So Lord, we think of our world today with the chaos um, that's happening across the globe. Lord, we ask that you come and intervene, bring your kingdom on this earth. And we pray for our leaders as well, global leaders, leaders of this nation, of our community and of our church. Come Lord Jesus, Amen. We move our um, hands to our heads and we pray for people who are suffering with mental health problems. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to free them from the prisons of their minds, Lord. We ask you to break the chains. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's move our hands to our hearts and Lord we pray now for specific people that we know and love that are on our hearts today and we name them to you now Lord. In their lives come Lord Jesus. Amen. We put our hands to our ears now and we ask Lord that you help us to hear your voice, help us to hear what you have to say for our lives Lord. Come Lord Jesus. And our hands to our eyes. And Lord, we pray that you lay the vision for our lives. Give us eyes to see the world as you see it, Lord. Amen. And finally, we put our hands together. And as we look to the week ahead, Lord, take our hands. Lord, I pray that our faith would be put into action this week. Lord, help us to live how you want us to live and let us be your hands and feet this week. In our lives, Lord, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Mark 1, verses 40 to 45. A man of leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you do not tell this to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for you your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places, yet the people still came to him from everywhere. This is the word of the Lord. 
So we have begun the exploration of the center point of the Christian faith, Jesus Christ. And we're doing that through going through Mark's gospel. And can I encourage you, um, as David said, to find that rhythm in this season, to find time of reflection, to find time of uh, opening up God's word. And maybe you can start today, start with Mark's gospel, reading a chapter of Mark's gospel a day, uh, just to begin to explore more of who Christ is. And so two weeks ago, we looked at Mark's opening words and he declared for us that this is about Jesus. This is all about Jesus and this Jesus is going to change everything. And then last week, we looked at what it means to be Jesus's people and to be Jesus's people means to see Jesus as king and then to repent and to believe the good news, not just to know it, not just to see it, but to live it, to see and to live as Christ is above all other things. Now, we didn't unpack exactly what that meant, but we we looked at what is the kind of headline of what it means to be Jesus's people. And in the same way, I want to do that today with what it means to be Jesus's church. And so this is a story of a man with leprosy who collides with Jesus, the son of God. And at the heart of what I want to grapple with is, do we think that all of this, that St. Peter's, that this community, that it's Jesus's church or that it's our church? And to get to the bottom of that question, we need to unpack this passage. So the the man with leprosy. Now, leprosy, there were various um, skin diseases at that time. uh, But what he seems to have is what we would now uh, consider Hansen's disease, which is where a serious bacterial infection uh, has stopped this man from feeling pain. And therefore, this has led to incredible and horrendous consequences as cuts and sores and infections and unnoticed wounds have gone untreated again and again and again. Now, skin diseases weren't nothing new in Jesus's time. Moses, thousands of years before uh, in the Old Testament, he understood about skin diseases. And in the first five books of the Bible, you see God giving Moses a whole load of different laws. And these laws are to set this group of people apart from all the other nations. And so there's the kind of sacrificial law, there's the ethical law, but you've also got the medical law. And all these laws are in various places, and Jesus interprets some of them for us, but others are a little bit more complex. For Leviticus 13 and 14, it seems to be very clear. This is a medical law, and it's specific for us about the various skin diseases of which leprosy is one of them. And all of the law helps uh, helps this group of people understand what's going on and for some skin diseases there is treatment for other skin diseases there is not and the, the the kind of baseline is we must know which is which before we respond it's exactly as we're reenacting right now not every cough is covid not every temperature is corona but until you've had your test you have to self isolate. Now, of course, it wasn't as clear-cut as that in Moses' time, including the understanding of homes and online shopping. So it does sound very extreme, but the kind of heart is the same as what we're doing now. In Leviticus 13, verse 45, it says this, anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair be unkept, cover the lower part of their face, and cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. This is to help with the kind of medical about what is going on with this person. And there's things that they have to do in order to show that they've either been healed or what type of leprosy it is. Now, fast forward generations, and for many, the Jewish communities had forgotten the kind of very heart of the law. And so leprosy was now, was no longer just a physical expulsion from the community. It was a spiritual one. It was a cultural one. And it became more than just self-isolation. It was now a communal event which 
basically led to, be, to many of these people with leprosy and skin diseases being purged of their uncleanness from the community. And so what that meant was you had men and women who were basically banished outside of their communities with real no hope of ever returning. They were alienated from everyone they know and love. And they basically lived wandering around the desert. So that's the man. Jesus, on the other hand, was not actually looking for people to heal. Of course, that's a huge part of Jesus' ministry, um, his healings and miracles. But these were, and this is key, those were only things that were affirming what he was saying. Jesus wasn't going around saying, right, let's go to the villages to heal the sick. It was an outworking of his message. This is what he said. Jesus replied, let's go somewhere else. This is just two verses before our passage today. Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. This is why I have come. So he traveled through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Jesus is going around preaching the kingdom of God. This new season, this new era. Repent and believe the good news. So that's what he's doing. And they collide. The leper calls to him, if you are willing, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus' response, as we see in the Bible in verse 41, Jesus was indignant. Jesus was angry. He's not angry at the man. He's angry at the sin that he now sees. Because this leprosy, this skin disease, God did not create this leprosy. This was an intrusion, not just on this man, but in the whole world. And so Jesus did what only Jesus can do. He reaches out, he touches the man. And notice, he doesn't say, be healed. It's a very specific word, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Cleansed, he was, that, that, that sense, not just that the, he was healed in some part, but that he was actually restored, that the leprosy was gone, that actually what was taken from the man by this leprosy was returned. It's an incredible moment. And Mark, like so much of his book, is just quick. This is what happened. And then we have this really bizarre interchange. Verse 43, Jesus sent him away at once and with a strong warning, it, it, that more like a stern word, Jesus proceeds to tell him, see that you don't tell this to anyone. What? This is a miracle. This is major. How on earth does Jesus say something so stupid? He's clearly not into PR. Now, we have to see that there is a negative and a positive. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Now, it seems really odd that Jesus is telling him to go to the very priests Jesus spends his whole ministry denouncing. But the sequence of what Jesus is asking him, it mirrors the same sequence in Leviticus 13 and 14. Yes, of course, there are small blemishes and spots which Leviticus talks about. And it talks about how we need to test and control for the health of the whole community. But there are specific ways that you have to be welcomed back into the community, especially with something as extreme as leprosy. And this is the extraordinary part. This man has experienced total restoration. He has been totally cleansed. He's been given back what was taken away. And Jesus is now saying, go and show yourself. Go and give your testimony to the priest. Confront them with the evidence. I want you to confront them that you are a witness to the kingdom of God. Don't run off to your friends right now. Don't go and make things more complicated. Go quietly to the priests. Show yourself. Keep within the medical law and do everything that's required and comfort them. 
Go and show. Confront him. Confront him. You can imagine the priest, the priest at that time would have known the, at the minimum the first five books of the Bible. It's not like your modern day vicars that have to Google all the Bible verses, but he would have known. Someone comes in and claims to have leprosy. Leviticus 13 and 14. And it's not the cleanse, it's not the law, it's not the sacrifice, it's not the priest that has made him well, the Messiah, the Son of God. And all Jesus wanted him to say was, go and show yourself as a testimony. Ask him, what priest, now what do I do? He doesn't do that. In his excitement, in his own narrow vision, he goes and tells everyone what Jesus has done. And on the face of it, it doesn't seem like a big deal. The problem is news spreads. This is what it says. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in the lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. It's interesting seeing as, these, as Jesus and the leper collide, how they switch places. At the start, Jesus is in the towns, on the inside, preaching the good news. And the leper is on the outside, in the lonely places. And after they've collided, it's now the leper who's in the towns with their family and their friends who's on the inside. Jesus is now outcast to the lonely places. And that's not what Jesus actually asked for. In fact, he sternly said, this is not what I want. Now, of course, we know from Mark's gospel that nothing can stop the kingdom of God from advancing. Nothing. But this man, this leper who had received so much, just did his own thing. It's not what Jesus planned. It's not Jesus' mission. And it's not what Jesus had asked of him. And then... The story is over and we move on. So there are two things that I think are helpful for us to remember as a church community. It'd be very easy to say, well, Jesus touched lepers, so we should touch lepers. Well, the major problem with that is that you and I are not the son of God. Also, the medical issues surrounding leprosy are not as complicated or severe. Well, then maybe we should uh, make it more modern and it's now about COVID and we are to reach out and touch people with COVID. And again, that's a bad idea on so many levels. The most foundational one being you and I are not Jesus. We are not the son of God. The kingdom of God is not us. Well, so maybe it's about those who are socially excluded. Those is on the fringes of society. And yes, of course, that is true. Jesus does call us, the Bible does call us to be involved in social justice issues with our hands as well as our minds. The problem is with, with all of these ways of thinking about it is not just the we're not Jesus problem. The problem is we put ourselves into the wrong role. You see, as the leper traded places with Christ, so Christ traded places with us. We were alienated from God. We were at some colossal, gaping, gigantic chasm. Jesus left his throne, left heaven, and chose to be alienated from God on the cross so that we in our alienation could be reconciled to God. The words that we read about when we hear about Jesus um, with this leper and the other account of leprosy is that word cleansed, not just healed, cleansed. And it's the same that we often describe how you and I, how we've been alienated and we've now been reconciled, that we've been cleansed by Christ, that we've been redeemed by Christ. And so, as sad as it is to say, we have to be honest, but our church is made up of le lepers. In our sin, and in our selfishness, and in our pride, and in our shame, and in our guilt, and in our apathy. And yet, that's not how we remain. We are forgiven, we are cleansed, we are delivered, we are restored. That is the beauty of the good news of Jesus Christ. It's what the kingdom is all about. 
and what sin and shame and death and despair, what that has taken from us, so many of us, that is being restored through the kingdom of God. That's what it means to be part of a community, that we are walking alongside each other, that we are loving one another, that we are caring for one another as we seek to be restored more into the likeness of Christ. As the kingdom of God takes over more and more parts of us, as it takes over our past, as it takes over our present, and hopefully that we give it our future to King Jesus and the reign and rule of our Saviour. So it's it's good news. It's not bad news that we're all lepers. It's that we are all on a journey that we've been brought from death to life, from alienation to reconciliation. That is the beautiful good news that we are as a community. It's not something to be saddened about or ashamed about. It's something to welcome. That's the good news. The, The problem is, like the man we can have a narrow vision of what Jesus is calling us to. And so the question shouldn't be on our minds as such. The question is not, what are we called to do? The question should be, what should we as a church look like knowing that it's Christ? What has Christ told us to be like? What what has he told us to do? And so, for example, style is irrelevant. Exalting Christ as the name above every name, whether that's with an organ or a guitar, that is what we are called to do, to exalt and proclaim Christ. Yes, we have preferences. Yes, we have particular styles that we enjoy. But that isn't why we gather. That's not at the heart of what we're about. For many of us, we actually have to sometimes learn how to sacrifice our time and our money and our energy. Because that's what it means when we come to serve. We don't come to consume. We don't come to church to be like, what can I get out of this? We come to serve as Christ has served us. When we can gather, when we can enter that promised land of actually being able to be with each other and touch each other and hug each other and eat together, And when we gather on a Sunday, it doesn't mean we just say hello to people. It doesn't mean just checking in with a text. It means probably eating together. The truth is we have to, we have to not just have a narrow vision of this is what it means to be church. The truth is that There are people that I've spoken to that have been coming to this church for years. And still people have never spoken to them. And there are people that still don't even know their name. There are people who when we're open, they are going to visit us. We must make sure that we never miss them even if it's not what we want to do because often catching up with friends and seeing friends that is that that is what i love doing but christ says we are to be welcoming we to be inclusive we to to gather people as we seek to show them the love and the kindness and the grace of god it means being even more sensitive in the conversations we have how we say things and who we say them to It means realising that we are part of a body of believers and we are to pray for those believers. We might even mean it means taking it a step further and it's praying for the congregation that you don't even attend. Lord, would you bless them and fill them with your grace and your mercy and your kindness and your love. Do we pray that for the congregation that we don't go to? I don't have all the answers. This isn't me unpacking exactly what it means to be Christ's church. What I'm wanting to do is to remind us through this passage that we aren't called to have this narrow vision of of this is what church should be for me or this is what it means or this is what I'm meant to do. What is Christ calling us to do? And the beauty is the pressure is off us because it's his church anyway. 
And so let us remember who we are in this story. That Christ took our place so that we can know reconciliation with God. And let us know that we, we often will have this narrow vision of what church is meant to be but that we will do everything as we pray and as we read and as we listen and as we dream and as we desire, that we would reject the narrow vision and we would ask, what does it mean? What does it truly mean to look and to sound and to be Christ's church? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we seek to be a part for a short time, you will bring us together again. And we will seek to exalt your name above every name. And we will do that through prayer and through some worship and through commitment to you and, and encouraging one another. We will one day remember your death by putting bread in our hands and drinking from one cup. And Lord, would you be preparing each and every one of us how we can so easily miss what you're calling us to that we just see that narrow vision. Help us to see the depth and the grandeur and the, the incredible vision you have for your church. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's now take a moment to respond with our voices and with our bodies uh, with our final hymn. <laughs> What a wonderful hymn sung by a really quite beautiful lady. Um, I really am a proud husband standing here. Um, but guys, thank you so much for joining us for the online service. I pray that you have a really great week. But before we leave, just have some notices. And first of all, we have some really big news that tonight is the big, big family quiz. This is in fact the quiz to end 
all quizzes. And if you could make it, it would be super great. So tonight from 5.30, we'll put a link at the end of this video, which you'll also be able to find in our regular emails that we send out. We also have Alpha on Tuesday evening, and it will be the second um, week of Alpha, but it turns out that actually the second week is the best week to join. So if you've not yet joined, or you have friends that you wanted to invite but you didn't, then please do so, you can still sign up, and we'll send out a link. Again, you can find the information at the end of this video, or at the um, St. Peter's website. Um, we're also running Love Your Neighbor at this time. So if you know anyone in the community or if you yourself are struggling, either you'd like some support um, emotionally or if you're struggling financially, then we'd love to get in touch with you and help you out with food or just to be good community to you. So please do get in touch. And um, lastly, we continue, are continuing to have our online morning prayer, 8.30, Monday to Friday, and our Wednesday evening gathering, which will be at 7.30. Again, all of these links can be found in the email. And last of all, I'd just like to pray us out. So Lord, thank you so much for the Mike's, um, ser Mike's sermon today, Lord. Thank you for the words that he shared with us, Lord. And thank you that we can be reconciled to you, God. Thank you that we were once alienated, but through the love of Christ that we can be cleansed, that our hearts can be purified, and we can come to you, Lord, knowing that we are cleaned by the blood of Jesus. Lord, we just pray for the whole community that they have a blessed week, Lord Jesus Christ, that they come to know you more. And Lord, I just pray for the bigger community outside of the church, Lord, that we can continue to be your hands and feet that we can continue to be a blessing and that we can welcome more people into this church family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I pray you guys have a great week and we look forward to seeing you soon.